the PS5 reveal event just happened recently today and I honestly just want to talk a little bit about it. Going into this event, I really expected it to be shorter than what it was. I didn't expect there to be as many games as they showed off. But honestly, after seeing everything that they had prepared for this event, I was very much happy. I was kind of expecting them to talk about the price a little bit, but it was more so of a hype event rather than them talking about all the specs and details. Which is also something I want to talk about later on in the video, but let's talk about the event itself first. Some of the games that they showed off that really got me excited, well first off, you know, GTA 5, we all know that we were excited to play that for the very first time. But in all seriousness, it is a good thing that they're bringing that over because, I mean, who the hell doesn't play GTA 5 at some point or another? It has such a huge install base, just bringing over the old players is going to bring in a lot of people who want to buy the PS5 and it's just going to be a great thing off the gate. But outside of that, well, it's literally just GTA 5, so what more can you expect? But getting into some games that I actually was interested in, we have Sackboy A Big Adventure, or as I thought of it, Little Big Planet 3D World definitely looks like a fun game i i guess it makes sense that media molecule will be making another little big planet game for another playstation console but seeing this one be more of a straightforward adventure type game rather than a build your own adventure type game it makes it look a lot more polished and more so like a rival to a legitimate mario game and moving on we have destruction all stars which seems to me like a it seems like it should be free to play, but it seems more like a Fortnite version of Twisted Metal. A very fun, flashy, destructive game that I would love to get into. I mean, the fact that you can get out of the cars and do all this different parkour stuff, I, I, don't, even, I don't even understand it exactly, but it looks really cool. Another game that really got my attention was Kenna Bridge of Spirits. This game looks really gorgeous, honestly. It has more of a cartoony aesthetic, but the lighting effect the particle effects everything looks really well done next up oddworld soulstorm i have not much to say about it all i just saw that my friends were interested in it i've never played an oddworld game myself but hey it looks like it's pretty interesting and then we have ghostwire tokyo now this one is something that i wasn't really sure about when i first saw the trailer it seems more like a psvr type game than a regular just pick up the sticks and play type game but the weird aesthetic, the Japanese setting, it really pulls me in. Then we have Godfall. Godfall is one of the first games that we've heard about for PS5 and god damn does it look really good. This game in particular I wanted to hear more about because I want to know if there's a multiplayer aspect to it. It does look like a lot of fun and honestly gives me some God of War PS4 vibes. So if this game had some sort of co-op or multiplayer, it would be a lot better than just playing single player. Then we have Astro's Playroom, of which I've actually heard a lot of great things about the PS4 game for Astro Bots. And uh, I, I guess it looks like it's really cool. Another Mario type game. I definitely would like to see that. And next up, we have my absolute favorite, Sweaty Basketball Player 2K21. And by that, I mean I... I I don't play 2k and i don't really care I, I know what's coming out for the ps5 because i mean that's a no-brainer why wouldn't it now this next one really really was an interesting time and by interesting i mean kind of freaky to me at least uh bug snacks i do not know what drugs these developers were on when they made this game but i definitely don't want part of that i don't want any of that at all but i will say it's one of the more interesting titles that they showed off today Next up, Demon's Souls. This is a game that a lot of people have been looking forward to, the remaster of the old, I think it's a PS3 classic. Definitely looking forward to breaking my controller to that game. And next up, my goodness, I'm actually excited for this game right here. This is the one made by Bethesda called Deathloop, and I've been looking forward to this ever since the reveal trailer. And before you ask if it's because the two main characters are both black, I, I will say maybe. But in all seriousness, this trailer really pushed it over the edge for me and made it a must buy. I'm also hearing that this is going to be a timed exclusive for PS5, so that's also interesting, I guess. Next up is Resident Evil 8. They're taking it in the same direction as 7, which looks really interesting. Definitely a shift of tone from what we've seen from the remakes. And yeah, I don't really play Resident Evil that much, but it does look really creepy, really, really odd and uh, I hope it's gonna be a great game. Real quick, one that I skipped over as I'm looking through my 
my list of stuff that happened during this event. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart looks really interesting. Honestly, when I saw the gameplay for that, I was a little confused, but uh, it looks really good, honestly. Jumping back and forth in between the rifts is pretty trippy, and I honestly think that's gonna be a really good gimmick, especially having a, a female Ratchet. And yeah, I said female Ratchet, not Ratchet female, just saying. And my god, I think I'm going crazy because I glanced over another game that I'm heavily looking forward to, the new Spider-Man game on PS5. I'll definitely be real with you, I did not expect it to be Miles. I knew it was a possibility based off of the ending of Spider-Man PS4, but I didn't think that they would do it like this. I thought maybe he'd be a, a playable character in the next game, but just making him straight up the, the main focus of the next game is really cool. He has that fresh cut, he has his electric powers, he is ready to fuck shit up, and I, I love that. And last but not least, the final game that they showed off was Horizon Forbidden West, which, ah, my goodness, I, I definitely need to get that game. Horizon Zero Dawn is definitely in my top five games, maybe even top three games on PS4, and I honestly am just excited to see what happens in the next title. Because the overall lore and the storytelling, the character development, everything about the first game was just so good. And seeing what they are doing with the second game, I can only imagine how far it's going to go. That was everything I was interested in personally regarding this reveal event. But going into the specifications and the hardware side of things, I want to talk about that now. First off, there's two versions of the PS5. There's an all digital version and there is a disc version where you can actually put in games like a regular system. The one thing that just puts me off about this is the fact that they didn't show anything about the pricing. If they showed the pricing for each version of it, then I'd be a little bit more enthusiastic about it. But just seeing that they have these two separate models, it definitely shows that they want to have a price gap between them. And if you've been on Twitter, or you've seen the memes, people are saying that this system is probably going to be about $800. And I don't know if that's the case or not, but I, I, I don't know, man. The system itself looks very, very futuristic, very sleek. And honestly, the discless version, the all digital version, looks a lot more sleek than the disc version. And what I'm really interested in seeing is who in the hell is going to buy the discless version, the all digital version, over the disc version. And yeah, I know, I know, you don't always need to buy physical games. There's a lot of people that just buy their games digitally now, and I definitely agree with that. That's a very easy way to do things. But me personally, I can't get rid of my physical media if a special edition for a game comes out with that has like all this cool stuff, a figure and a bunch of different collectibles. I'm definitely buying that. And if you have the digital version, well, you're basically buying that and you're not going to get much with it. I mean, you're going to get a game, but you can't really put it in there. And one major thing I really wanted them to talk about, which I understand that they did not, because again, this is supposed to be more of a hype event and not just supposed to go into details and specifications about stuff. But what I want to hear about is the backwards compatibility. If they're having these two separate models where you can put a disc in one but not the other, and you have a bunch of disc games for the backwards compatibility that is supposed to be there for at least PS4, well, how does that work exactly? Because even to this day, I look at the Xbox line of consoles, the Series X included, and I see Game Pass, and I see their backwards compatibility, and I'm like, wow, like, they really have a lot going on. So I kind of wanted to see, like, if they're going to expand PlayStation Now to make it more of a competitor to Game Pass, if they're going to make the backwards compatibility go further back than the ps4 but i really don't know the whole mindset i had was on day one if you were to buy a ps5 or an xbox series x and you were to get either playstation now or game pass or with game pass you're going to get thousands of games on day one that you can play on your series x and they're not always going to be you know the series x games but they're going to be games that you can play and me being a person who hasn't had who hasn't had an xbox in years I could play thousands of games that I have never touched and that would be awesome. And yeah, PS Now does have a lot on there, but the catalog is just not as large as Game Pass and it's just, 
I, from what I know, you can't download all those games on there. You still have to stream a lot of that stuff and that's honestly annoying. That's one of the main reasons that Google Stadia didn't really become a success. Another big thing, if you have the all digital edition, is that going to come with any more storage and how much storage is even going to be in these consoles to begin with? Like trust me, these systems look very, very sexy. They look very futuristic and something that is just luxury. But there's definitely something to be said about what they're not telling us because there's a lot of questions that still need to be answered and this system comes out in what, like another four months? But anyway, that's about all for this video. Just want to talk about the reveal event a little bit, give my thoughts and opinions. Let me know everything you think in the comment section down below and uh, I guess follow me on Twitter or some shit like that. I don't really care. And I will catch you guys in the next video.